Is signing into the Teams Admin Center a time-consuming pain? Or are the settings too complex for users who want to manage basic settings like users and passwords? This week in IT, Microsoft recently announced a new admin app, which brings a subset of the most commonly accessed admin settings for Teams in the form of a convenient app. So let's take a look. Hello, Russell here, Editorial Director of Petri.com in This Life and IT Consultant in a previous one. So this week, Microsoft has announced a new admin app for Teams that brings all of the settings that you need to manage on a day-to-day -day basis so that you can manage everything within Teams itself without having to log into the admin center separately. So Microsoft 365 was originally designed to scale for large enterprises. And over the years, Microsoft has been gradually working on the various different admin centers to try and simplify them. Because one of the complaints about Microsoft 365, especially for small enterprises, is that it's just too complex to manage. And part of the problem is that the admin centers have been a little bit of a mess, settings all over the place, various different admin centers, and it's difficult if you're looking at it for the first time. So of course, many small organizations, startups, they look to Google Workspace or whatever they're calling it these days because it's just designed for smaller organizations and it's easier to get started and manage it on a day-to-day -day basis. But Microsoft has been doing a really good job at tidying up all of the admin centers, putting it in wizards there to make it easier to get set up and started, and just to make everything simple and beautiful so that when you look at the admin center, you know, it's kind of intuitive where you should click, where you should go to perform common tasks like, you know, adding a user or resetting a user's password, for instance. But Microsoft has taken another step forwards in making all of this easier. They've added a new app in Microsoft Teams called Admin, which allows you or you know somebody who wants to administer Teams access to all of the things that you might want to do on a daily basis. Adding users, resetting passwords, managing licenses and subscriptions, managing settings connected to Teams, messages, webinars, all of that kind of thing. So you don't have to log into to the admin center separately. Now, of course, if you're an IT administrator, maybe this isn't such of a big deal, but if you're a non-technical person that's been tasked with managing this kind of stuff, then this really makes it much easier and simpler for you to do. Now, this new app is actually discoverable in the Microsoft Teams store, although you will actually have to manually search for it. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute, how you actually install it. Before you can use this app, you are going to need appropriate permissions to do things like add users, manage team settings. So you don't need to be a global administrator to use it, and that's of course not recommended, but you are going to need maybe the user admin or the Teams administrator role to be able to use it. So let's head over to Teams and see how all of this works. So here you can see I'm in Teams, and the first thing that I need to do is go to the Teams app store, find the app and install it. So to go to the store, all you need to do is click the apps icon in the bottom left hand corner of the far right of Teams here. And here you can see I've got the option to either browse the different available apps or to search. Now at the moment, for whatever reason, I wasn't able to find the app by just kind of browsing around and navigating for it. I actually had to search for it. So all you need to do is go into the search box here, type admin, and you can see here in the results on the right hand side, you can see the admin app by Microsoft. So I'm gonna click on it here, and you can see a little bit of a description about the app, what it does, what permissions you need, etc. And I'm just gonna go straight ahead and click add. So now it's adding the app, and you can see that the app has been added to the list of functions on the left hand side of Teams here. So this is the home screen of the admin app, if you like, and there are various things that I can do here. If I want to install the latest Office apps, I can add a user here. Uh, but really the meat of this application is in the options below the home page. So you can see here, users, team, subscriptions, and settings, etc. So let's have a quick look at what's available here. Now remember, this is a subset of functions that you get in the actual admin center. So you can't do everything here, but it's just the most commonly accessed tasks. 
So here on the users pane, you can see I have a list of the users in my tenants and I've got the option to add a user. And again, this is all very similar to the admin center. If you're familiar with it, it just takes you through the process of adding a user, all the different things that you need there, like the basic information, assigning product licenses if you want to do it, and you just follow that through. You've got other options here, like the ability to search for a user and reset their password if you want to do that. And there are other options, of course, I can just click on any user, see all of the information about that user, change any groups or any roles that have been assigned, any aliases in email, and you can also see the licenses and apps that have been assigned to that user, and you can change them if you want to do that. You've also got the option on this page here to again reset a password, a block sign in, or to delete the user if you want. You can also click on the free ellipsis here and you can access a couple of different options there, like if you want to manage product licenses or edit the username here. Coming down further along the list, we've got the Teams tab here. And here you can control settings that are connected to individual teams. So if I have a look at Argo's dog food here, you can see when they load, we've got the basic information about the team and I can edit things like the description and, and the email address that's associated with this team. I can also edit the members and the owners of the team. And we've got some other settings here, like being able to let people outside the organization email the team uh, and to set the privacy. You know, do we want to make it a public or a private team and delete it. Coming here to subscriptions, I get to manage, you know, any licenses that are assigned to my tenant. I can add more products, I can assign licenses here as well, and even look at payment methods and have a look at my invoices to see, to see what's recently been paid. Uh, because this is a developer tenant, of course, there are no invoices to see here. But that's quite handy if you're trying to manage invoicing and payments. And finally here, we've got various different settings that I can manage connected to meetings, for instance, but if I want to enable meeting transcription or cloud recording or allow users to bypass the lobby, uh, those basic settings I have here. And you can see here, if I want to do more advanced things then I need to go to the Teams Admin Center. There's also things that I can do connected to messaging, things connected to read receipts and guest users, for instance. You know, you're going to be familiar with these settings if you've ever been into the Teams Admin Center, I guess. There's a couple of settings here connected to files, which are quite interesting. Um, of course, by default, files are stored in OneDrive, but you can change that to you know, allow other cloud storage options like Dropbox and Google Drive, for instance. That's just really interesting. I don't know quite how all this integration works if you don't want to use OneDrive. So I'm going to have to investigate that in the future. And if you have a tenant or, you know, uh, subscriptions that allow webinars, then you've got a little bit of configuration here, basically the option about who can register for your webinars. If you want to uninstall it, all you need to do is just hover over the admin icon here in the left hand side of Teams right click and then you've got the option here to uninstall it and you just need to confirm that that's what you indeed want to do. So that's the Teams admin app in a nutshell. So while it's not anything revolutionary, of course, if you're an IT admin, then maybe it doesn't add a huge amount of value. But where I really think this is going to be important is for those non-technical people who are tasked with, you know, doing all of this kind of really basic high level admin stuff that maybe the IT department wants to delegate, wants to hand off. So if you found this video useful, then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you get to see all of of our weekly updates from This Week in IT. So what do you think of this app? Let me know in the comments below if you think it's useful. And there are two videos on the screen now which you might also find interesting, so please take a look at them. But from me, that's it for this week, and I'll see you next time.